Hi, and welcome to WOW Talk. I'm Donna Capacity, a thriving cancer survivor. And I'm her naturopathic doctor, Darlene Gustin. We're here to encourage, educate, and empower you on your journey to optimum wellness. Hi. Hi, Donna. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. That's good. I'm glad we're both doing well, especially now that it's flu season. Here yeah. we go. Here we go. It's it's November. Yeah. For us for us Canadians, November is a special month. It's a leaf mold season. The leaves have fallen. It's raining on them today. And uh outside it's it's environmentally challenging for a lot of people, especially people with sinus problems. And if we go inside, it's not much better because we are suddenly indoors. We've closed the doors. We've closed the windows. It's cold outside and we're sharing germs. Uh, yes, that's what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people are sick right now. There's there's something going around, um, something that has targeted the lungs, the throat, the cough. So a lot of people are getting this and um, of every age. And there's different different reactions to these things when people call me like there's things you can do in advance and there's things you can do when it's too late and you're already sick okay which leads me to this question what can we do instead of getting a vaccine for the flu okay so so cold and flu prevention there's a lot of different choices there. The The number one answer to that question is be healthy. But as Canadians, there's a lot of nutrients that we need to supplement just seasonally, things like vitamin D, zinc, and C. Those are the top three most common deficiencies I see in the winter season. And it's not a surprise that all three of them are quite important for the immune system. So to have sufficient status of these in your body before cold and flu season is the first thing. And hygiene, of course, is a, is a big deal. But there are also other things like homeopathic remedies. There are a few homeopathic companies mm-hmm. that have a combination of ingredients that are used in advance of cold and flu season. So you might take a dose once a week, four weeks in a row, and then once a month for the rest of the season. And I've been prescribing these to my patients for decades. They perform really well when when patients ask for a substitute to the flu shots. And, um, and the statistics on how well they perform are very good. And like over 90% reduction of colds and flu in season one. And it also works better in season two and better again in season three. So a lot of my patients have been using these and and doing really well on them. And, and even simple things like being hydrated. So if you're dehydrated, all of the linings inside your upper and lower respiratory tract are pasty and tacky. So it's easier for airborne particles to adhere where if you are more hydrated, then you have sufficient moisture levels that it's easier for your tissues to cleanse sooner and not let things take hold as easily or quickly. Okay. All right. That um, makes sense. So we've missed the pre, (laughs) you know, those, (laughs) those weeks, those weeks before. So what can we do now? Well, if it's early onset, um, yes. there's a herb called echinacea that's really good for early onset. Yes, I have used that time and again for me and my children. That's right. Yes. So so children can take it too. People with autoimmune diseases should not take it because it does stimulate the immune system. So it is contraindicated for those people. And it's something that is an immune stimulant, especially against viruses. So it oh. just kind of strengthens the message if like if I were to wake up and think I had some viral infection I'd be looking for my echinacea and I would usually take it every couple of hours all day for like a day or two and the whole experience is over right okay so so it's really just for the beginnings of an infection to make it shorter and milder and um and you can't take it really for long stretches of time because it is a stimulant and mm-hmm. it would eventually lead to immune fatigue. So it's not the kind of thing you could take every day all winter. Okay. And th- there's other options for that. 
Okay. And what are the other options? <laughs> <laughs> well, garlic used to be popular. Uh, isn't that great? I used to take yeah. garlic pills. Yeah. 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 yeah so, I forgot about that. Yeah. So garlic is antimicrobial. So it has the ability to kill a variety of microbes, bacteria, viruses, funguses. And the unique thing about garlic is that it does not destroy the probiotics. That is brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so important. Yeah. Yeah. And it has other benefits. If you also happen to have high cholesterol and high blood pressure, you could take garlic for longer stretches of time, whether it was for cardiovascular health or for immune health. Okay. All right. That's a good one there. Yeah. And then I guess we could just go back to what you were saying. Let's go back to the basics, the hygiene. Constantly, wa- not constantly washing our hands, but being sure to. When you yeah. come in from being outside, wash your hands. before. Exactly. You, don't put your hands all over your face. Don't put your hands in your mouth. Yeah. Those types of things, exactly. right? Exactly. That's really good. I try to be so careful um, in my, if I'm in a public place, going up and down, like holding a handrail, like railing on, on the stairs or what have you. I try to avoid that. I mean, of course, I don't want to take a fall either. Right. But I tend to almost pull my sleeve down or something before I, I hang on to a railing. Of course. If I feel the need. And um, getting lots of sleep, staying hydrated. I'm sure all of those things come all into the play. the basics, the vegetables. Yeah. I mean, the answers to health are always going back to those basics. What did you eat? Did you drink your water? Did you get your sleep? Are you happy? Do you have relationships? And, mm-hmm. um, you know, health always starts there. But um, I wanted to also mention one of my other favorites, okay, which is oregano oil. Oh gosh, I love that. <laughs> we can't miss oregano oh, oil. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is brilliant. It's okay. So let's tell our listeners though, it's pretty wild when you take a drop of it on your. T- we try to put it in the back of our uh, throats almost to get it down as quickly as possible because man, is it strong. And then I chase it with orange juice or something. Like exactly. I need something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. man. And I also use sign you orego or something, orego. And what it is, it's, it's actually a nose spray. And I find that that is really helpful because I am stuffed up constantly. Yeah. And I don't use it all the time. No. But I do try to use it. And, okay. and you know, so I can have the open airways. Yeah. Especially when I go to bed at night. <laughs> yeah. It's very anti-inflammatory. Yeah. And it is strongly antimicrobial and very well known for being effective on some of the modern resistant strains of infections. So when I meet people who've had some form of infection, they've gone through a series of antibiotics and the infection just won't go away. It's not unheard of that a round of oregano oil stops the the stretch of, of chronic infection. And that's something that also, you would not take every day all winter. It's something like how you would treat an antibiotic. You just take it for a short period of time and that's mm-hmm. it. And just like antibiotics, if you took oregano oil too much for too long, it would also eventually kill the probiotics. Okay. Like some of them, not so, all of yeah. them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to mention what has left my mind. Oh, it's good for sore throats too. Of course. Yeah. yeah. All that stuff. Yep. Yep. And it can be inhaled as well. So yes. Not just swallowing it, but inhaling it. Now, do you mean now taking the oil now, how would you do that as opposed to that spray that I bought? Yeah. So I usually would tell my patients to boil a cup of water, put it in a little shallow bowl, put a couple drops of oregano oil in. And then if you inhale with your mouth closed, the fumes go more upwards into the sinuses. And then if you inhale with your mouth open, you pull the fumes more into your chest and lungs. Okay, and while you're saying that, you're reminding me of my aunt in Italy, Mm -hmm. Rome to be exact, Mm -hmm. when I wasn't feeling well there. She uh, boiled chamomile tea in a pot on the stove and she had me leaning over it and taking the towel over my head and making a tent and breathing it in. And I'll tell you, it certainly helped. It does. It does. So it's important to know something about the immune system, that 80% of your immune system is defined by the quality of your microbiome. Again, exactly microbiome. Yeah. So the good, the good, the collection of good bacteria that live in our gut, they are 80% of your immune system. So keeping colds and flus away really 
big part of that is having a healthy digestive system. And if wow. you, yeah, and, and if you did back. get sick, yeah, n- not to overuse any of these things, whether they're prescribed antibiotics or herbal things, because they're also meant to be only used the way they function. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that um, that is so interesting that that is 80% of our immune system. Yeah. I know we've talked about it before, but yeah, I yeah. think it's only sinking in right now. Yeah, yeah. Donna's looking a little glazed over. Yeah. She's, she's like processing this like 80% of my immune system. Yes, yes. And And the other thing I want to say about lung health, there's this huge study that was done over a period of 20 years, over 6,000 patients in the study, led by... 10 or more of the world's best independent researchers. So there was no company sponsoring this with an ulterior motive. And they monitored lung health over a period of 20 years. And they were counting how often do you need hospitalization or a puffer, get asthma, end up with pneumonia, how sick for how long, how often. And what they found was that cleaning your home one time per week with national brand cleansers, cleansers, and cleaning like that, products yeah. mm-hmm. for our windows, for our toilet, our laundry detergent, all purpose cleaners, all that kind of stuff. Using those to clean your house one time per week was equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes per day, according to what it does to your lungs. That is so frightening. Mind blowing. It's, yeah. it's one of those studies that really shook me to the core. And I thought, wow, I'm a naturopath. I use natural stuff. I wasn't perfect. I wasn't paranoid. You know, someone else would come home with a container of something. Well, yes. And one of those products. Yeah. 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 And, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, I would use it. Someone bought of course. it, you know. So most of my stuff was natural. But after I heard that study, I definitely got Closer to a hundred percent with with the products in the home. Unbelievable. Yeah. Really, really, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. And so, what do we do if we are sick? So we missed it. We missed the mark. We didn't prevent. Okay. I know. I always want my chicken soup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I for do sure. always. It just if it's for just sure. a broth. I don't know. Makes me feel better. I tell my patients. Have stuff on standby. Have have a collection of the right stuff on standby. But my personal favorite trick, mm-hmm. a dose of oregano oil and a nap as fast as possible. So wow. sleep. Sleep is one of the best things you can do. So don't tough it out. Don't force yourself to go to work if if you have other options, if you can work from home, if you can even just have a power nap, 20 minutes can go a long way. Yes, it can. You know, and... Um, and of course, chicken soup or hot water with lemon, just the basics, the things that our grandmothers used still work today, right? Of course. Yeah. 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 And what was I going to say about that whole thing? Um, the sleep is great. Oh, yes, work. Please don't go to work when you're not feeling well, when you are really sick, because it's going to be passed on. Yeah. For sure, you yeah. are going to pass it on. There's yeah. No way try, not. try not to share these things. It's just be respectful and and... Some people wear masks. There's pros and cons to that, but um, but there's there's a time and a place for that too. Yes. Right. So yeah. if you're if you're a person on chemo and you're going to even a hairdressing appointment, it's not gonna no one's gonna laugh at you these days if you wore a mask, and it's not gonna hurt either. But but the one thing I do in the days when I uh, was required to wear a mask all day at work, or if I choose to, like uh, I went to visit a friend and she was very nervous about catching infections and I was flying to another province and she asked me about wearing a mask. Yes. Nobody else on the plane was wearing a mask. I don't care. I wore the mask because my friend wanted me to. But what I do is I put essential oils on the bottom end of the mask. Yes. And they disinfect the mask. They make it easier to breathe. And depending which oil you chose, many of them kill a lot of microbes as well. Yes. So essential oils are great. I love essential oils. Yeah. Oh my gosh, can't and get you, enough of them. Yeah, and you can also diffuse them in yes. the home if somebody's sick. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So um, 
I always love that eucalyptus. It always smells so Eucalyptus fresh. and um, thieves oil. Do you know about thieves oil? Oh my gosh. Yes, you've talked about it before. But why don't you why don't you tell us what it is again? Because uh, I can't remember oh. which episode we talked about it on. Did well, we? probably essential oils. No, this if one you, deserves its own yeah, episode. It does. Well, maybe we should do that. Okay. okay so, so we're just, not going to Just a yeah. little clue. Yeah. Thieves oil is a very famous um, story in the history of medicine. And it was a combination of essential oils that that was used to to protect the doctors from dying of the plague, the pandemic in the 1600s in France. And um, that recipe of essential oils is still on the market today. And it smells fantastic. It smells very Christmassy. Mm. So look up Thieves Oil and read the history. It's fascinating. And then we'll do our own little episode if we haven't already. But I do know that we talked about it yeah. earlier in one of our, our first uh, our first season. Um, but I was going to... Uh, what is it with me today? I can't remember anything. I don't know. I'm not even tired. Every time I go to ask you something... Maybe we should talk about rosemary oil today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well, why don't we yeah. do that right it's after this? famous for memory. Okay, geez. Okay, I need yeah. to get on to that. Not yeah. bad on the lungs either. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Good, good to know. Makes your hair grow too. Yeah. <laughs> Does it now? I that's know, a great. That's I know. A, that's great. It's okay, it's kind well. of funny when I study herbs in particular, mm-hmm. even minerals, and and it's like, like how are those three things ever related? But for some reason, those three properties are in the plant rosemary. That's incredible. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. we're going to do a whole episode on rosemary. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we've covered quite a bit. Is yeah. there something I'm, we're missing? Can no. you think of anything? Well, yeah. You okay. know what? I'm, we talked about pre-infection, during infection. Let me talk about post-infection. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So post-infection, okay, when you're all feeling better, if you've taken any antimicrobial antibiotic long enough, maybe you do need a probiotic. But sometimes if the infection keeps coming back, if someone who's sick too often, when they get sick, it's longer than everybody else. When they get sick, it goes deeper than everybody else. Then there are other products in naturopathic medicine that are immune tonics. So there's Chinese mushrooms and there's astragalus and there's things that help the bone marrow. That's where the bone broth is mm-hmm. good. It's a deeper immune support, right? Okay. So those are things that... Um, that can be used if it's dragging on. So it's not the acute infection with the big fever and the big symptoms. It's more like that cough's taking weeks to go away. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or the throat or the whatever. Or, the, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. So I think that gives the users plenty to play with. That's right. Yeah. It gives you... A- Lots to use in your arsenal uh, to combat the flu. Yes. And flu season in general and what comes along with it. So that you can be ready for Santa. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Send us your questions if you have any comments, suggestions. We're here to listen also. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.